I almost returned my iPhone 13 mini while moving from my iPhone 11 Pro Max because after a week, and I'm not joking, a week of trying to transfer my data from my old iPhone to the iPhone 13 mini, I still wasn't getting anywhere. It was frustrating me so much that I was just 24 hours away from selling my iPhone 13 mini and just ending my pain. It just shouldn't be this hard. So this video features me being kind of a little bit dumb, but also a little bit smart, fixing my own mistakes. And it stars my iPhones, my Mac, iMazing, Gemini Photos, and the Apple iCloud 2 terabyte edition. Now this was a considerable downsizing exercise for me, like moving from a five bedroom house after the kids have gone to a neat two bedroom apartment. This was moving from a 512 gigabyte Pro Max monster to a light 128 gigabyte 13 mini. But looking back, I made some fundamental mistakes that held me back, but I've learned what I did wrong. And I'm going to share with you the three big mistakes I made that almost made me return my iPhone 13 mini. It was just too hard, but I also want to share how I fixed the problems and what happened with my iPhone 13 mini. So when you're moving from an iPhone 13 Pro Max to a much smaller device in terms of size and storage capacity, you have well over 300 gigabytes of photos stored on your source phone well, you're gonna to have to find a way of getting rid of those photos so you can use your new 128 gigabyte phone. So my solution was to save the money of buying another large capacity device and put that money into a two terabyte iCloud subscription instead. That way I can also share my photos and have them updated across all my Apple devices, my Mac, my iPad, and my iPhone, and even my Apple Watch. Neat, right? Well, in theory, it sounds perfect, but here was big mistake number one. When you turn on iCloud and you have a massive amount of files like this, it takes days, actually well over a week, for those photos to make it into the cloud and then to replicate to your devices. Now, I have a pretty good fiber internet connection, but it's a bit of a weak signal down here in this part of the house where my office is situated. So it literally took over a week for this to upload and stabilize. We went away camping for four days and I thought it would be done when we were back, but no, it was nowhere near done. So if you're going to put a bunch of photos on the cloud so you can save some device space, then give yourself some time for this to happen because it will take about five times longer than you think if your experience is anything like mine. All right, that was one mistake I made, but it was probably the least frustrating of them all. I had way bigger hassles to deal with. The second bigger problem I ran into was when I thought it would be a good idea to hook my iPhone 11 Pro Max to my Photos app on my Mac and to import all my new photos. Now, I know I should be doing this far more regularly to stop this kind of thing from happening, but both you and I know that sometimes, well, you just don't do that. So I almost fell over when the Photos app on my Mac said I had over 12,000 new items to import. And this big proportion of which was video. Now, like I said before, I had over 300 gigabytes of media to sync to photos. So I took a deep breath and started the sync. Nothing happened. It looked like something was happening, but actually nothing happened. I know. That sinking feeling just hit you too, right? When you know you're gonna be up till 2 a.m. trying to find a solution, set it into action, and then wake up in the morning to see if it worked to find out that it's failed. Yes, I had days of this. What I eventually figured out was that I had to repair the photo library, which is on an external disk and took most of a day. And I also needed to reset location and privacy settings on my iPhone, weird, but seems to be necessary for me to get this photo sync process going. So now, I was about 10 days after I started all this and I'm starting to wonder if this is all worth it. You too, right? And here's where I got stuck in a death loop that made it all worse and took days to figure out and put right. Here's the biggest mistake I made. 
So pay attention and learn from my mistake because it's an easy one to make and it could cause you a lot of frustration. I had iCloud syncing switched on as I started syncing my photos with my Mac via USB cable. And not only this, every time it failed or timed out or something like that, I started again. Can you guess what happened? If you can, let me know in the comments because you probably spotted it quicker than me. If you do this, sync via cable and have iCloud syncing turned on at the same time, running it multiple times, what you get is a ton of duplicate photos, which then starts showing up on your iPhone. Now at this point, I'm almost losing the plot until I take a moment and figure out that I need to just stop trying to sync by cable because that sync is happening via iCloud, but it's just too slow for me to actually see what's happening. So now I've figured out what I'm doing wrong to get my photos in sync, but how do I fix the duplicate problem that I now have? Well, theoretically, iCloud should sort out duplicates, but I'm too impatient to see what it will actually do given enough time. Instead, I downloaded the Gemini Photos for iOS from Macport app, which helped me after some time identify the major duplicate issues and start to fix my mistake. Okay, so I'm at a point now where I've got a reasonably in shape library. My iPhone storage is at around 110 gigabytes, but the proportion of photos taking this space keeps shifting, it keeps changing. And it's been almost two weeks now and I needed to get using this new phone. So I tried to replicate my old phone onto my new phone. And here's where I ran into major problem number three. I kept trying to transfer my 11 Pro Max image, as it were, to my iPhone 13 mini. It would take a crowbar, but it should just fit. But every time I tried using a Mac application called iMazing, and it would take 10 to 11 hours to do it, it would fail. Again, this drove me to despair until I realized what I was doing wrong. Instead of trying to transfer photos over to my new phone from the photos library on my 11 Pro Max, I needed to not copy any photos at all. Just leave them out completely and then let iCloud do the heavy lifting to fill in the photos on my iPhone 13 mini in an optimized way once that was done. And once I figured that out, I was golden. The transfer succeeded. I now have optimized photos on my iPhone 13 mini and I've been pretty severe in culling the bloated and unused number of apps to my new phone. So I'm proud to report that the iPhone mini now only has 46 gigabytes of my 128 gigabytes space taken up. Once I figured out I needed to find a way to let iCloud do its thing and just get out of the way, the process went pretty smoothly. I've also learned something about iMazing too. I was using iMazing to try to transfer all the data, settings, files, and everything from my iPhone 11 Pro Max, the big beast, to my iPhone 13 mini. And while I think iMazing is a great piece of software and can highly recommend it, it sometimes isn't the most intuitive software to use. In fact, sometimes it's downright confusing. So iMazing people, if you're watching, it would be great to have a downsizing template or workflow or process for people to work through because from the feedback I've had on my channel so far, I don't think I'm the only person doing this downsizing thing. So was it worth it to downsize to this iPhone 13 mini? To be honest, I absolutely love it. I was prepared to part with it, but that was before I got to use it as my daily driver. But I've noticed a few things about it, which make me realize why Apple might stop making small dimension phones next year if those rumors are true. If you want to find out why I think they'll do this, be sure to come back again soon. And I'll leave this here for you to watch from me too. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.